Hey guys, so today I am going to swatch two Royal Talons products that recently came in the mail. The Echo Line watercolor brush pins and the Echo Line liquid watercolors. And I purchased the majority, bleh, the majority of these from Dick Blick. Right now, the Echo Line markers are $3.19 each and the Echo Line um, liquid watercolors are $4.99. Now I did get two of these markers from my November scrawler box. So that's sort of what inspired this. And I used the funds generated from my Patreon to purchase these. So if you find these sort of reviews helpful, interesting, inspiring, what have you, please keep in mind that supporting my Patreon is a great way to get more reviews. So we're going to start with the markers and I have 10 colors and a blender marker. And I'm gonna go grab a paper towel because these things tend to get messy. So I'm going to test for two properties with these markers. I'm going to test for water blendability and blender blendability. And if you guys didn't watch my Scrawler November unboxing, this is what the tips look like. At first I thought they were fiber tips, but they actually seem like they might be foam rubber, which in my opinion makes them superior to some of the other watercolor markers on the market. And these are dye-based watercolor markers. Um, the only brand that I know of that uses pigments in their watercolor markers would be Windsor & Newton's watercolor markers. And they have posting caps and they're a bit reminiscent of Crayola markers. So we're gonna start with Lemon Yellow Primary, which is such a bright color, it might not show up very well. And we're gonna start with the Echo Line Blender. And I'm gonna wipe it off to clean it on a paper towel. You can also clean it on some scratch paper. And we're gonna use the water brush. So these markers seem to be very water soluble. The blender is not quite so much, but if I cleaned off my Ink Essentials craft sheet here, I would probably get a better result, or it might even be useful for dipping into the liquid echo lines. So next we're swatching light yellow. And I'll just go ahead and use the blender pretty much immediately, try to get it while it's still wet, and that does seem to work a bit better. So this might help for color to color transitions. Let me zoom way in for y'all. Next is chartreuse, which is sort of a yellow green. So yes, for best results with the blender, you wanna go ahead and blend it while it's still fresh on the paper, which makes sense. And most of those watercolor blender markers, like the Tombow ABT blender markers and the Marvy Le Plume blender markers tend to be glycerin, like vegetable glycerin based. That just sort of acts as an extender. You could also apply your watercolor marker some to some sheet plastic or a craft mat like the one I use here in my studio. Basically any plastic surface that is not designed to absorb. And that is yellow ochre. Next up is burnt sienna. Red Violet, which is one of the colors that had been sent in my scrawler box. 
In fact, these echo line markers are why I picked up that scrawler box. There's some other goodies in there that I wanted access to, and I thought that seemed like a pretty good deal, and they took PayPal, so why not? Okay, Carmine. And for those of you who have difficulty capping and uncapping markers, or maybe you found the Spectrum Aquas difficult to uncap, I know I did, these are actually very easy to cap and uncap. Next is sky blue or cyan. And so far the tip cleaned off pretty well. I figure there might be some staining. Sometimes you get a little bit of staining with these sort of markers where the, the tip is actually clean, but the color has sort of permeated. All right, so ultramarine deep. And still ultramarine deep, I don't know what I'm thinking. Also cleaning out my water brush in between swatches, that's important for color accuracy. Finally, ultramarine violet. Good purples can be hard to find. All right, so let's do some spectrum blending. Let me move this over. And we're gonna go, I don't actually have any good greens in this set, so we're gonna go with chartreuse to yellow ochre, to burnt sienna, to carmine, to violet, or rather ultramarine violet, to ultramarine deep. We're gonna start in the color prior. And since these are fairly juicy watercolor markers, they will blend sort of into themselves already. And we could get further blending if we went with the color prior. Let me show you guys. So we're going with chartreuse back into that yellow ochre and blending back up a little bit. It looks like I'm getting a little bit of pilling blend back up again. And that's just something that tends to happen with water-based markers. They can tear up the paper. We can also try blending between colors using the blender marker. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did. These markers seem to be extremely popular with brush letterers or hand letterers. I am neither of those really. I am a comic artist, so I do do some hand lettering, but my brush lettering is abysmal. Okay, so blend down. Hmm, that doesn't seem to work as nicely because what it does is it removes a little bit of the color. So you see we're getting some lighter areas there. So clean my blender marker. We'll do it one more time and we're going to use water and I promise you the water is not going to work super well because it's going to pick up some of the pigment and move it the way it did in that swatch test.
and I am using a Strathmore watercolor field journal for these. That's what I use for a lot of my watercolor swatches. I'm just running down the spectrum just to see what I end up with. All right, so that is three potential ways to blend these Echo line markers, color into color using the blender and using water. Um, I'm going to allow this to dry and get everything labeled, and then we're going to take a look at those liquid Echo Line colors. All right, guys, my inks have had a chance to dry, so I'll just go ahead and go in for the close up. And if you need photos of this or static reference, just check out natasoup.blogspot.com. You can go ahead and search in the search bar for Echo Line. This is going to be part of my watercolor basic series. So now we're going to go ahead, turn the page, and swatch those Echo Line uh, liquid watercolors. And I am going to do that with a brush. And I need to go grab a glass of clean water. So I will be right back. All right, so we're going to begin here with number 666, pastel green. And I am going to go ahead and uncap it. These have never been uncapped. Get that brush ready by dipping it in some clean water. And I'm just going to go ahead and run through all of these colors in time lapse and then we'll regroup. Now for comparison's sake, I grabbed a few bottles of a very popular watercolor and um, we're looking at Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolors. They come in these cute, almost pharmaceutical little vials that happen to have a dropper. And I have swatched and talk about the, talked about these on the channel before. So the difference is, um, so far, the, 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 the fastest difference is you get an eyedropper with the PH Martins, which is pretty handy because you need to supply your own with these. You get 30 milliliters with the Echo Line, whereas you get 15 milliliters. And uh, the Echo Line is currently a little less expensive than the Dr. PH Martins. I have not done any light fast tests with them. I do know that Dr. PH Martins is um, not light fast, they are dye based. And I am assuming, given the colors available in Echo Line, these are dye based as well. So I'm going to let these dry and then we're going to do some blending experiments. All right, guys, everything has been swatched. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. And I've got that blender pen from earlier. And we're going to do a couple things. I want to see if these colors will migrate after they've dried. And these have had a chance to dry. They haven't dried for like an hour. They probably dried for about 30 minutes, though. So over here towards the end, I'm just going to and clean my brush in between try to blend out the color, which seems to work quite well. Although on the paper, uh, the scrubbing motion does make the paper a little bit prone to pilling, which is not the fault of the markers. But it does seem like with the blender marker, these colors will move. So I have a feeling that Echo Line Markers and Echo Line liquid watercolors are probably intermixable and um, will work together, which is good to know. And that would make it, um, I think the Windsor and Newtons can kind of work together as well. 
So it would make it like one of two systems that work together. Now we're gonna try to reactivate using a little bit of water. So it seems like there's a little bit of reactivation, but not an excessive amount. Not as much as some dye-based watercolors. And of course, some colors seem to be more permanent than others, like the light red right down here. And the reason we care about this is this is going to affect layering and how muddy some colors get. So it seems like the very bright colors um, remain pretty steady. So another thing I wanted to do is, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. I am going to use the cap. See how the cap has, um, has some paint in it? I'm gonna use the blender marker. I'm gonna pick that up. So that's also a good way got to clean that all out though got to be careful about that so it seems like a good easy way to use your echo line bottled paints with your echo line markers of course it would also be ideal for say brush lettering or adding just a little bit of a color as a shadow okay so that is a sort of introductory look at Echo Line liquid watercolors and Echo Line watercolor markers. I will see you guys again soon when we go ahead and do the field test. We experiment with these and we find out some new tricks and tips. So I look forward to seeing you guys then and I hope you will join me. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more art supply reviews, more craft supply reviews, more lettering product reviews. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.